there, welcome to hang out with DFCC credit cards. Today we are here to add some value into your life. So on hang out with DFCC credit cards, we hang out with a personality from a different industry. So the industry we're talking about today is the fitness industry. So my guest today, she is a fitness influencer she's a social media influencer she's a fitness personality she's a fitness consultant and she's an issa certified transformation specialist you might have seen um, transformation pictures on instagram from the before and then a few weeks after what the transformation looks like the possibility of that being one of my guest's clients is very high. My guest today is Sarani Tilakaratna. Hi, good day to you. Hi, Sasha. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? How has um, life been these days? It's been good. It's been busy, but like good busy. Everything's picking up again and everyone's very positive. Yeah. So it's going great. It's going great. That's really yeah. good to hear because I think today I want to focus a little bit about um, how you think the fitness industry has changed uh, with okay. COVID, with the lockdowns and okay. uh, sort of get your idea of how you see things moving forward as well. So um, I think to start with, I'd like to know how you, how you personally handled the lockdown. What was that like for you? Did you work out? <laughs> okay. So in the beginning, the first week was very tough. I was finding it the first two weeks since I'm an extrovert, I personally, I don't like home workouts. I never, I end up never doing home workouts and I always want to get dressed, get out of the house and I want to go for gym. I want to wear my nice gym clothes and my gym shoes, meet my friends and I really want to have a good workout at gym. So adjusting to that out of the house lifestyle was very difficult. I'm sure it was difficult for me and a lot of other people. So the first week was a bit of a transformation. I took time to just calm down and get used to being at home. And uh, just to clear my mind, I was actually painting watercolors at a point really <laughs> to clear my mind. And after that, I was ready to, um, you know, start working out. And within a week, I was up and at it again. So after that, what I did was um, I have a lot of equipment at home, as in I have dumbbells, a Swiss ball, a mat, a little, little resistant band. So although I couldn't do a muscle building workout per se, mm -hmm. I was able to do a, a, you know, a maintenance workout, maintain the muscle and uh, burning a little bit of fat like that. Right. So like, would you say you worked out frequently or was it sort of, did you go through phases during it that time? It was a phase, like it was very difficult. I was like, okay, I'll do it in the morning, okay, I'll do it in the afternoon, okay, I'll do it in the evening. So basically from the beginning of the lockdown to about the first two weeks, I was absolutely unproductive. <laughs> but that's the truth. That's how we were, you know, yeah. adjusting to that was very tough, uh, especially being an extrovert. I need people, you know, I need to see people all the time. So um, after that, it was after I, cle I cleared my mind, then I finished it off in the morning. Then I actually fell in love with home workouts. The efficiency, like how fast I can get it done and get it over with, go upstairs, do the workout, finish it in an hour and then get back to work. So that was really, really, I actually fell in love with it. Yeah, yeah. and I think um, that was sort of the only option for most people, uh, yeah. for actually all people during the lockdown. But I think um, the fitness industry was really affected by the lockdowns, by COVID, because okay. it's such a physical contact industry, okay. right? Okay. You're, okay. you're sort of sharing gym equipment, okay. you're sharing a space, you're working okay. out with trainers who make physical contact with you. Right. Um, so when that is taken away, the um, the options sort of, we have to find more creative ways to interact with uh, our peers and our trainers. Yeah. So I think during lockdown, um, we saw a lot of trainers and uh, fitness consultants moving into uh, Instagram lives. live sessions and doing Zoom yes, sessions. Yes. Um, how did you do any of that and how yes. did you see that yes. transformation? So when it comes to workouts, I did see a lot of fitness influencers do free live sessions and free workouts um, on Instagram in the morning and in the evening, which was really nice. It was it was completely free and it was literally why social media is there for that good cause that's exactly what we want people to be on the internet just to be really nice and giving and anybody who was at home who didn't know what to do uh, who didn't know what kind of exercises for their body type you know what kind of thing they should follow mm -hmm. or somebody who just was so demotivated could have seen everybody doing it so they would have wanted to join as well so what i did was i i didn't do the workouts on live i did with a few other brands and with a few other interviews I did some live sessions where we discuss what our ongoing problems are I also did with 
uh, Hema's wellness, what we discussed, um, what problems we are going through during the lockdown, what we are going through mentally. Because if we don't clear out our mind, it's very difficult to set any goal, whether it's a work goal, whether it's a fitness goal. If our mind has clutter and it's not clean, it's very difficult to start. Starting is easy, but following through is very difficult. Yeah. So we discussed upon that. Upon that. And, um, and I gave a, a discount also for my online training. So I was under the impression that a lot of people were working out. Okay. And uh, that way I was able to do my part with getting our girls to work out a little bit more at home, especially for fat loss. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned that you were under the impression that a lot of uh, people, were working, people out, were working out, but, but that we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> we, will, we will get to that. We're going to talk to Sarani about um, how she saw um, her clients and her peers working out during the lockdown period and how she sees the current state of affairs in the fitness industry. We'll get to that, but right now we're going to take a short break. Every time you swipe your TFCC credit card, get 1% cash back into your account. Experience double the happiness with TFCC credit cards. TFCC Bank. Keep growing. Welcome back to Hangout with DFCC Credit Cards. My guest today is fitness personality Sarani Tilkaratna and we're talking about the fitness industry post-COVID right now. Um, so now that our lockdowns have uh, sort of loosened up and we're now trying to get back to uh, a routine of things, how do you see the fitness industry uh, getting back to the state of things as in the current state of affairs with, I mean, because like I said before, such a physical Thing, thing the fitness industry so we have a lot of social distancing regulations yeah. to follow lots of things to do before and after a workout yeah. do you see that sort of interfering with workouts how do you see that happening now okay so a lot of us extroverts are really happy that we get to head back to the gym that itself is motivation so we really are happy that we are allowed to go for gym and um, actually I'm really glad to see a lot of gyms in Colombo. I was able to visit a few and we are all following the safety regulations. Um, there's, you know, when you enter the gym, there's a mat with the disinfectant on it. You need to step on that mat and you need to walk in and they also check your temperature at the entrance of the gym. So if you are having a high temperature, they're not going to let you in. Apart from that, you have to pre-call and pre-book. You have to inform the gym that you're coming at this time and only a limited amount of people are allowed at the gym at that time. Also, when you go in, you have to bring your own towel and um, your water bottle and things like that. And also, each machine has the spray, uh, a sanitary spray and a towel that you need to wipe down after using because sweat um, is, a, is a, you know, it's a body fluid and yeah. we can, we are, it's risky yeah. to have that there. So, uh, apart from that, the mats, the mats, the, the floor mats that we do our exercises exactly. on, those have been removed as well. So little, little things like that have been made and you, the steam and so on are, are not allowed to be used. There are little, little even restrictions even in the changing room. Uh, I think some gyms, the showers, you're not allowed to even use the shower. You need to come and you need to leave. Yes, yeah, so you that's can't really, shower in some yeah. Gyms. So some gyms have really gone to, most gyms have actually gone to that extent. So we feel a little bit safe actually to do yeah. it that, that I'm really proud that as a nation we are following these rules, you know, it's really important that we do because because we did so, today we are not suffering with another lockdown. Yeah. So we can see that the industry will go from strength to strength and everyone will be really motivated. And I see people already joining new classes, Zumba classes, whatever group class and things, they're already at it. And they're also conducted with a minimum distance of a few feet yeah. uh, with social distancing. So let's hope that we can go from strength to strength and yeah. that we have completely beat this virus. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. It uh, just gets better from here. Yes. Uh, that's actually going to be my next question, which is, do you, like you said, you do see people coming back into the gyms. You do yes. see people getting back into fitness now yeah. after the lockdown. Do you feel yeah. like people have not sort of let that take a sidetrack? Uh, I think the gyms opened a little while ago, mm -hmm. but even after the gyms opened after a month or two, only people were confident yeah to go yeah. so now i think it it is i think they are starting to pick up yeah 
Yeah. And uh, but I think we really need to keep continuing to follow the safety regulations, yeah. and that way we can stay healthy. Yeah. Um, okay. You mentioned something before we went into our first break, which is that you um, you were under the impression that a lot of people were working, working out, out during lockdown. Yeah. Um, is that the case? Is that how you saw it? Is that what your clients were doing? Okay. What your peers were doing? How was that? Okay. So. I was <laughs> under the impression that oh my god everybody's at home I have so many clients now I have so much work everyone's working out I'm really happy this lockdown has made everybody bored they are so bored that they are working so out. jobless that they're working out you know and I was really really happy that uh, we can have a lot of engagement and it's a time for me to teach as well it's a time that they have time to listen to what I'm trying to say and we can all work together but just the last week, I did a small thing with um, this Rotary Club of University of Colombo and they've done a research and from that research, I was really shocked. Okay. So it said that most people, their working out has absolutely dropped due to COVID, during COVID. Their level of physical activity, they're working out. Most people, we expect them to work out, right? Yeah. They have done absolutely <laughs> nothing like me for the first two weeks. Okay. Lockdown. <laughs> so they have been me for the whole, whole, uh, for the whole lockdown time. So I was actually in shock. But they have also, I must, their work effort is really commendable. Those girls, they've also gone to the extent of finding out why. Okay. So the main reason, the highest bar, was because of lack of motivation. Mm. So what I always tell my clients is that motivation is an emotion. Like some days we wake up in the morning happy, some days we wake up in the morning and we are so sad we don't want to get out of bed. Just like that, motivation is an emotion and we cannot depend on emotions to be consistent and to go ahead with our daily lives. Yeah. So if we practice that discipline, the discipline of waking up in the morning and brushing your teeth. Like do you ever say I'm lazy today, I don't want to brush my teeth. It's just something you have to do. <laughs> it's something you have to do. It's a part of your routine. Have breakfast and leave. Leave the house. So if you just incorporate that, nothing extreme, no crazy diets, just the way you're eating, um, you know, fix your portions and just the way you go to work, you come back, just like that, just there's 168 hours in a week. If you can allocate minimum three hours for your workout, I think you're good. So when you put that into perspective, I think you're like, oh my God, I actually do have time. Yeah. So it's, it's the little things and the small changes. So if we start from there and keep the discipline, that way we can stick to a routine and be consistent and see results at the end and see long term results. So yeah. motivation is an emotion, it's discipline that will get you results and consistent results. Wow, I mean, I, I feel like I've, I've just received fitness advice that I need, to, I need to use in my life as well. We're going to take a short break and after that we'll talk to you about the future of the fitness industry together with Sarani. A bank should be for everyone, children, elders, youngsters, those looking for jobs, those with jobs, those in business, for you, for me, for all of us. From savings to current accounts, fixed deposits, credit cards, leasing, housing loans, DFCC Bank offers you a range of banking products. DFCC Bank, for everyone. Hi there, you're back with Hangout with DFCC Credit Cards. Today we're talking about the fitness industry with Sarani. And uh, Sarani, I think you've been in the industry for how long now? How long have you gotten into, uh, since you got into sort of fitness consulting? And I opened my, I started my Instagram in 2016. Okay. Yeah, 2016 October. Right. Yeah. But your, so your fitness journey started around. My then. fitness journey started after A levels, where I studied. I, I didn't even study. I ate, ate, ate. <laughs> That's a lot of people put a lot of students put on during A levels. Yeah. And then it's very difficult to shed that fat afterwards. So after A levels, I was like, enough is enough. I need to hit the gym and just just lose some weight. Yeah. Yeah. And then I got into weight training, and I saw that you can shape your body, mm -hmm. and you can sculpt it the way you want. So then I got really into it. And now you're here. And I mean, you've become sort of a, a well-known personality in the fitness industry here in Sri Lanka. And you've seen you. some of the changes that the fitness industry has Definitely. been through in the last couple of years as well. Definitely. I'm curious to know how you see the fitness industry moving forward from here, whether that's in Sri Lanka or globally. How do you okay. see that? So I'm going to talk about Sri Lanka okay. uh, because globally the situation is uh, we Different. really can't tell, yeah. But when it comes to Sri Lanka, okay. 
So fitness has always been here, but we have to differentiate bodybuilding and fitness. Remember that bodybuilding was always here. Mm. Bodybuilding, physique competitions, those were always here. And that has been actually the bodybuilding federation and those things have really developed and come up to a certain stage now. As sports. As sports. So this, that industry was already there. But the change in fitness has taken place during the recent years is where everybody is into fitness now. So fitness doesn't mean bodybuilding only anymore. It means overall health, maybe reducing diabetes, maybe losing some weight. If you're underweight and you need to gain weight, if you're um, facing with NCDs and different diseases and different um, ailments and things like that, or just overall health, just to be fit. Uh, fitness is for everyone now. So you can see housewives, um, people in corporates, people like you and me, the youth, very young students of 20, 22, they are, everyone is health conscious either for their looks or their health. So everyone is hitting a gym or going for classes or doing their part uh, now in the industry. Uh, now they're entering even normal people. It's a trend now yeah. to be fit. So actually I should thank the media and digital media and social media and social media influencers and just normal people who share their journey. Uh, all that has really helped our nation as a whole uh, come up. Also, I think that if there is a significant economic growth, because gym equipment and things are very expensive. If I want to start a gym, I have to source it from another country and things like that. So if there is, if people are expecting a substantial economic growth, I really see that because right now, most of the gyms are in Colombo mm. and it spreads out to the suburbs and the rest of the country. So I'm sure that if there's more economic growth and I think if people have a little bit more money to invest, definitely even out of Colombo in the suburbs and in the, in the cities and in the um, areas out of Colombo, we will definitely see an improvement. And as people have more money for gym memberships, yeah. as the studies were done, um, the people, of course, people who had disposable income for club memberships and gym memberships are the people who were able to keep a fit lifestyle. But now there's education on home workouts as well. There's, there's a lot ample, um, there's footage and there's so many videos and things on the internet that you can find on YouTube and things like that, that people can do things at home. So I think it's our responsibility to Google and search. If without, you know, Googling the gossip about celebrities, maybe you should <laughs> Google how to burn belly fat. And, and um, help yourself. Help yourself. No, it's a little bit of extra knowledge goes a long way, especially I don't think my workout will work, work for you mm -hmm. and the diet that you follow might not work for me. Yeah. So we have to do a self-study. So coming back to the fitness, how, how I see fitness in Sri Lanka, I think there is, uh, there is potential for a substantial growth. I think we have to hit way more of the population. I want the whole population to be fit, no matter what your income is. Uh, I really need, if it's, fitness means not only taking a gym membership and lifting weights, you can go to a walk in the Atuyana and still be fit. Yeah. So I want people to be educated about that and then to be motivated and then take care of their nutrition and take care of their parents because our parents are the ones who have the, all, the whole entire package, pressure, diabetes, cholesterol, everything. Yeah. So we need to take care of them and they need to take care of us. So I think fitness will really, the, this industry will flourish in future. I'm sure of that. And I really like that you make it like not a luxury but just a simple part of your life. A simple part and of it. It's your just simple. It's simple. It's simple. Um, and finally, I think my question and a lot of people who are watching would like to know this from you. I think uh, as someone who's been through a transformation of your own, um, mm. a physical transformation of your own and mm. I'm sure a mental transformation through that, yes, um, I'm sure people would like to get some advice, people who are fitness enthusiasts or whether that's people who are starting to get into fitness, just working out like you said, whether that's for looks or for health. Yeah. What advice would you have for someone who's getting into it now or is in, enthusiastic about it? Okay, so for someone who, it's like this, fitness is not something, this is something I always say, it's not something you start and stop, you have to get back to it no matter what. That's why even for my clients, so I do online training for female clients, mm -hmm. and um, so what the way I give their diet plan is, I don't make it super strict. That, that doesn't mean that you're not going to get results, mm -hmm. that means it's within your calorie intake, but we all eat rice and curry. Yeah. So I'm going to fix that to the correct proportion of more proteins, more vegetables and the proportionate amount of rice, the correct amount of calorie intake for your height and weight and the amount of activity that you're going to do, the amount of workouts per week that you're going to do. So what I tell them is don't go too extreme, you know, like some people, we love to either starve or binge eat. Yeah. It's, 
don't don't do that because that really messes with our hormone system we come up with all sorts of things uh, you know problems with our hormone system and uh, regularity and things like that when we go to shock our system with binging and starving so don't do that just eat your rice and curry eat it in the correct quantity hire a coach or hire a trainer or somebody who can advise you at least for the first few months because a lot of people don't know which you can't blame them you know they don't have the they're not a fitness expert or whatever they don't have the knowledge about fats good fats and bad fats mm -hmm. cholesterol and anti cholesterol which is fine so ask around google a little bit and find out or hire a trainer or somebody and do things in a very in a way that you can do it every day like you're not going to buy strawberries and almonds and asparagus today and i'm sure you're never going to buy that again you know yeah. so do things that you can do it in a consistent way even your exercises do it in a consistent way a certain amount of training per week and this many calories per day and um, take it day by day and track your progress a lot of people fall off the fitness wagon sasha because they don't track they think oh they, like even my own clients tell me oh aki i haven't lost weight the scale hasn't changed oh i'm the same weight but i did my workout and i'm eating clean what do i do and i was like okay stop talking please send me your pictures <laughs> so every 10 days i tell them to send me the pictures, pictures. i put it in a grid and i send it back and they are like <gasps> You know, yeah. you can see the sides have gone down, the arms have gone down, the back fat has gone down. A lot has gone down, but it's not showing in the scale. So the second thing I want to tell you is, don't trust that weighing scale. She's a liar. It <laughs> might be showing, it might be showing uh, water retention. It shows fat loss. It shows muscle gain. It shows all all sorts of things. It even your hormone changes will reflect on the weighing scale. So don't trust it. Take pictures. Uh, take your measurements. Track your progress, and that will keep you motivated to go on. so clear your mind and do this for yourself just suck it up for the first four first two weeks suck it up and do it and then once you see the results you'll automatically be more motivated it will become a habit yeah it will become you you'll be motivated you'll want to make a diet stricter because you know it's working yeah so yeah. a lot of people fall off because they think what they're doing is not working it's a waste of effort so track your progress and suck it up for the first two weeks <laughs> and you will you will see the result you'll get there solid advice from sarini i think uh, <laughs> if that doesn't get you started i don't know what i don't know <laughs> <laughs> so sarini thank you very much for joining thank us on the show today thank you for having me so here is an opportunity for you to win 10000 rupees courtesy of dfcc credit cards i will ask you a question and if you can answer this question we will be picking three lucky winners to give away 10000 rupees cash courtesy of dfcc credit cards so here is your question Name three methods to pay DFCC credit card bills. Once again, the question is: Name three methods to pay DFCC credit card bills. If you know the answer to this question, inbox the answer to the DFCC Facebook page together with your name, your contact details, and your NIC number. And who knows? You might be walking away with ten thousand rupees cash courtesy of DFCC credit cards. So good luck. I will see you next time with yet another personality from a different industry to talk to you about their lifestyle, what hopefully motivates them and to give you some advice into incorporating their methods into your life as well. So we'll see you next time. Thank you very much Sarani. Thank you Pleasure for talking having me. Sasha. Thank you for having me.